Bulaginaka, my name is Lucia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tauvenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in in the news tonight, meningococcal vaccination campaign to be rolled out tomorrow. Rice farmers to benefit from increased paddy price. And Fijians celebrate Mother's Day. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. More than 333,000 children under the age of 19 will start receiving vaccination from tomorrow as the nationwide meningococcal vaccination campaign rolls out. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services, through its partners, have acquired 124,000 doses of vaccine, while the remaining 200,000 doses are expected to arrive soon. Pranita Prakash reports. Through the support of the UNICEF, the Ministry of Health and Medical Services acquired 124,830 doses of meningococcal vaccination. The mobilization of people and resources to help ensure that families are fully aware of the campaign and also to reach and vaccinate all the 12 months to 19 years old in the country is not an easy task at all. In addition to the vaccination, it is also very important for both children and, ad and adults to take preventative measures. Health Minister Rosi Akbar has urged parents and guardians to ensure their children are vaccinated from the life-threatening disease. Vaccination not only protects individuals from life-threatening diseases, but also offers protection to the community at large. As such, it is also important that community members are aware of the proven effectiveness of immunization in saving lives and preventing serious morbidity and mortality. The Australian High Commission has been working hard to formulate a plan to address the high-risk areas. So as the ministry prepares to execute the first phase of the rollout of the meningococcal vaccine campaign, Australia stands prepared to continue its support to the ministry and its hard-working team, especially so in its quest to design a longer-term solution. Calls have also been made for communities and families to understand the purpose of the vaccination program and benefits for those under 19 years. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Good news for rice farmers as the Fiji Rice Limited in a recent board decision announced an increase in the rice paddy price effective immediately. Fiji Rice has secured a contract with the Fiji Sugar Corporation and has decided to pass the benefits on to the farmers. Ritika Pratap reports. Fiji Rice will now supply rice to FSC and in view of the new market it has increased the price of paddy. Our paddies are in three grades. Uh, grade 1 used to be $750, so we have increased it to $800. Grade 2 used to be $700, so we have increased by $50, that is $750. And uh, grade 3 used to be $650, now increased to $700. There are currently 230 active farmers. However, Pratap says the benefit will be passed to any rice farmer that supplies paddy to them. Slightly above uh, 1,000 tons. So we we actually working hard to get more, but it all depends on the production. Eh? So farmers have their own problems. I agree with that. And uh, mostly, basically, the main focus at the moment is to increase the production. On the supply to FSC, the company is providing 196,900 tons of rice to all farmers in Vanuatu, and the new market has increased their sales by over 275,000 dollars. The farmers are now more interested in cultivating rice and uh, that uh, will also improve uh, the living standard of the farmers. The farmers will benefit from that to increase their other farming and buy their needs for their houses and everything and support for their school children. PG Rice is working on plans to venture into farming and further upgrade the mill to ensure smooth operations. The farmers are currently planting six to seven varieties of rice, which matures within three months for harvest. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Changes will take place in the bus industry and bus operators have been urged to strategize to continue reaping the benefits. Acting Prime Minister Ayaz Sayed Kayum made this statement while speaking at the Fiji Bus Operators Association annual conference in Lamy yesterday. Ali Kimbia with the story. 
Being one of the commonly mode of transportation, the bus industry is projected to develop at a rapid pace. Like I said, because of technology and because of the changing demographics in society, a lot of changes will take place in the next few years. And I think as individual bus companies, you need to be able to strategize as to how your bus company will be relevant. Said Kayum says operators should come up with innovative ideas to lift the standard of the industry. You need to be able to be, and you need to be able to understand what your market is. If you have a bus that's got Wi-Fi on it, and you've got another bus next to it that does not have Wi-Fi on it, and the same fare, or maybe five cents more, who do you think the young person is going to go into? Which bus? The Fiji Bus Operators Association says more dialogue with the government on developing the industry will be the key to move forward. The government needs to involve the bus industry in its deliberations and formulating the best policies going forward with the win-win situation. This will provide the platform for open discussion and analysis. However, said Kayum says government has always provided bus operators with opportunities to grow and they will ensure the best services are provided to all Fijians. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Mother's Day was celebrated across the country with most families ensuring their mums were pampered by taking time out to acknowledge and thank the matriarch of the household. Maggie Boyle spoke to a few people who were doing last minute preparation on what it means to mark Mother's Day. From Sunday service to ensuring their mothers were taken care of. There were even some who had to get to last minute shopping. For most though, the importance of Mother's Day was evident. It's not only this day, but always we should keep them happy, you know, in terms of what they have struggled to bring us up and this is now our time to pay them back. Yeah, we have to celebrate Mother's Day yeah, because of what we do, what mothers did in the family. Uh, mother's Day is just time out for the whole family today. Yeah. Cook for my wife, my mother has passed away already. But happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of the world. A one 70 year old mother of eight, she began her Sunday as usual, attending church on behalf of her family. I'm in God's hand. I think eight children of mine, they all good, growing well, and I teach them the way I am now. Meanwhile, even corporate organizations got in on the Mother's Day spoils. Hardware company RC Manabai turned their Mother's Day promotion into an event to treat senior citizens and recently retired mums. We decided to have uh, uh, extra added value to our Mother's Day promotion where the qualified uh, 100 mothers will get a loyalty card. And for this restaurateur, it was a special opening to cater for all the mums having someone else to do all the cooking. So we giving a treat to them as well. So it's a Mother's Day. Every mother deserves a treat for today. In the words of Robert Browning, motherhood is where love begins and ends. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Still to come, Peace Corps volunteers prepare for 50th anniversary. And we will bring you the success story of renowned sportswoman Mira Rokoroi. Stay with us. Bula, kero mai singa toka, kero ndo tali taka na varorong na radio Fiji One and ndo moi viti. I have a nerin se, uti kumina som uti bola ndo tali taka na radio Fiji One and ndo moi viti. We have kuya zo si ndo tali, na kura rama ina omani, na ndonga. Vitu tali taki ndo tu kumina sivali, vitu na kuto rongo, varorong na radio Fiji One and ndo moi viti. Na radio Fiji One and ndo moi viti na bonga ni BNN. The first ever funeral rites facility that opened in Batuanga Suva yesterday has been applauded not only by religious groups but by the Hindu community as well. Nine religious organizations have joined hands to allow people to perform the final rites for their loved ones in a more dignified manner. Pranita Prakash has more. Fijians have welcomed the initiative saying the facility will be convenient and meets the necessary requirement for the final funeral rites. The facility has been built beautifully and just a request for everyone to look after it well. It's a beautiful place and it is good for everyone. There was nothing of this sort before. I commend the Fiji First government for providing such a facility. 
The religious organizations have also uploaded the initiative. The facility will be available free of charge to those who wish to make use of it. This is the only facility in the world, and, and for Fiji it is uh, one of its kind. Uh, places have been award, uh, allocated to, to do so in the past, but people were doing it with, with fear because uh, some of the people not allowing them to uh, use the, the, the places. But now, since a special place has been designated for the government, uh, for the people to do so, so people will do it without fear and with respect. The government had allocated $920,000 to build the funeral rights facility. Simla facilities will be built in Nandi, Lotoka, Nosori and Lambasa. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The American Peace Corps program will celebrate its 50th anniversary in Fiji next month, which will culminate in a week of celebrations. The celebrations aim to showcase the lifelong bonds that volunteers have made with their Fijian families and how the program has contributed to Fiji's development. Maggie Boyle reports. The Peace Corps volunteers live and work across the country in some of the most remote and rural communities. It's this level of volunteerism that has set this international program apart. And our goals haven't changed. It's about um, skills transfer primarily. Volunteers bringing their skills, their capabilities, their, their, um, uh, their experience to Fiji to support development. And the benefits for volunteers are immense. The language and cultural teachers who stay with them and facilitate language classes each day. And uh, we find that they see this as uh, a tool for their success in their service here in Fiji to speak the language, not only speak the language, to also adapt into the new culture. The country office is now reaching out to those Fijians who've experienced the program firsthand. We, we, I'd really like to encourage people who have a story, who have had an experience, who have some appreciation for what a volunteer has contributed to their life, to their community, to come forward and share that. The anniversary will be marked with a national exhibition and several events, as well as the return of some of the Peace Corps volunteers that served in Fiji since 1968. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. A new booklet will be printed to mark the 140 years of celebration for Girmitias next year. Speaking to a large crowd gathered at the Civic Centre in Nandi to mark the Girmit Remembrance Day celebrations today, Local Government Minister Parveen Kumar said a lot of books on Gurmit has been published, but this new booklet includes the stories that has never been told. The first batch of indentured labourers arrived on May 14, 139 years ago, on board the Leonidas. Kumar says this day is set aside to show respect to the legacy and material contribution of the Gurmit forefathers. There are some Gurmit books written, but we are in the process of doing another booklet where this untold truth will be printed. Be it either weightlifting, football or rugby, women have been stamping their mark in the field of sports. In tonight's successful Fijian segment, we will look at the journey of newly elected Fiji Rugby Union board member and the first woman at the helm, Mary Rokoroi, Vashnil Prasad, with this success story. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Rokoroi is a very familiar name when it comes to sports. Rugby fans may remember the 1987 Flying Fijians captain Koli Rokoroi and football referee the late Leone Rokoroi. This time it's their youngest sibling, Mary Rokoroi, who has been making a name not only in her profession but in sports. Uh, sport is in my blood. Uh, my dad used to be one of the uh, Suva Rugby Unit Administrator back in those days uh, during Ratu Mara. Uh, my brother Koli Rakuroi used to captain the Fiji team in 1987 uh, to the World Cup. Um, Leone Rakuroi uh, is a, not only a soccer referee but also a rep for the soccer team. Uh, and also, I do have a sister, uh, Miriam Mambole. Uh, she's based in Nandi. She's also into netball. So we do cover the rugby, soccer, and also netball. Rokoro is the first woman in the FRU board. She was elected during the annual general meeting last month. She had applied for a place and was given full support by the sport, mainly led by men. I applied and I was very blessed to be accepted and be part of the board. Eh? The general manager Tanwa Group says there are a lot of plans to improve women's rugby in Fiji. 
meeting very soon to discuss uh, how we can uh, move um, women's rugby forward. Eh? So I'll be very happy to offer support, uh, advice or anything that will help us uh, move forward. Rokuroi is not only passionate about sports, but her profession has also played a vital role in her life. She has been working for Tanwa Hotels for past 15 years, and in her first four years, she got promoted six times. Anything is possible. Eh? Uh, 2011 is when the hotel also moved from 3.5 star property to 4 star with uh, our leadership, and also at the same time uh, breaking a record uh, on, in the 17th uh, um, Tourism Excellence Awards when the uh, win came to Suva for the first time. Born in Yalava, some 24 kilometers away from Lambasa, life was not an easy one for her. My first uh, job here was 2003 and I applied for a receptionist. Eh? So I started off in uh, 2003 as a receptionist and then I moved to a uh, trainee DM. And a year later, I became the duty manager, and a year later, I became the senior duty manager. And then, uh, and a few years later, I became the executive assistant manager. And finally, in 2007, I was given the role of, um, as the hotel general manager. The hardship in the life has never stopped her from growing. And Rokuroi is confident to carry the family legacy to another level. Vashnil Prasad, FBC News. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Ahead in sports team, Wellington humiliates Lautoka in the first OFC final. And Nakarawa named European Player of the Year. This and more coming up. I am Pramila Vairuku Reki Reki Se. Subha Meri Aak Khunti Hai, Toh Main Mirchi FM Sunti Hu. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. We are the bar town of Keriya Driver. We are listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I am Sandhya Narya Refugi Se. My all friends are Mirchi FM Sunti Hai. Mirchi FM is hot. I love Mirchi FM. We have a spin to talk about Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. In discipline and lack of coordination in attack were the order of the day for the Lotoka football side as they were thumped 6-0 by Team Wellington in the first leg of the OFC Champions League final earlier this afternoon. Poor defence from the Blues in the second spell cost them the game and sensation Pranil Naidu was given a red card. He will now miss the second leg. The Fiji Airways Fijiana 7s team will meet Australia in the Langford Cup quarterfinal tomorrow morning. The Iliasa Tanimbola code side put an impressive start after defeating England 24-14 in its first pool match. They then beat Brazil 47-14. However, New Zealand proved, proved strong, defeating Fiji 12-7 in the last pool play. Fiji will take on Australia in the cup quarterfinal at 4.42 a.m. tomorrow. Itasiri rugby coach Koli Sewambu was not satisfied with the team's performance despite beating Nandi 21-13. In round three of the Skipper Cup match at Ratzakambau Park in Nosori yesterday, Sewambu says they will regroup this week and iron their weaknesses before they battle Nandronga in the next round. Melita Vanga reports. Despite the win yesterday, Laita Sirikot's Koli Sewambu is not too happy with the players' performance. The strength, uh, we didn't really utilize the, the ball the way we wanted to uh, as part of our game plan. So that's something that we need to fix uh, before we play Nandro next week. Sewambu says they have to play according to their game plan as they prepare to meet Nandronga in the next round. Look, it doesn't get any easier than, than this. Um, it's not even easy from, uh, from the first week. So uh, we just need to work a lot harder and play a bit smarter. Captain Filimoni Seru says the win over Nandi will keep them ahead in the competition. Naita Siri fly half Kini Douglas says the players played their hearts out against the Jet Setters. We've learned a lot and we prepared for the next couple of games left for us. It will be a very tough game against Nandronga in the upcoming match. Nandi captain Samuel Sagiwa says his side gave it all and they will come out strong in their next match. Naita Siri was a better team. Uh, we came here, came in fight. Uh, thank the boys for the effort. And the boys fight. 
Last the Naita Siri side meets Nandrunga next weekend, while Nandi battles Malolo in round four of the Skipper Cup competition. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. The Yasawa rugby team continues its unbeaten run in the Vodafone Vanua Western Challenge. The side managed to overcome a tough battle against Nukuloa, beating them 24 to 14 at Lotokas Churchill Park yesterday. They dominated the first half, scoring four tries to take a 20 to 6 lead. The side has a mixture of Yasawa players from the Western Division. We managed to hop into all our Yasawa boys, yeah? the player in the mainland, uh, to represent the Tikina. So that's how the boys are giving, uh, giving their all yeah? in terms of uh, playing on their, their Tikina and their, their Tikina. Fijian born and racing 92's Leone Nakarawa has been rewarded for an outstanding European campaign by being named the EPCR European Player of the Year 2018. Planet Rugby reports Nakarawa helped racing 92 to the Champions Cup final in which they were narrowly defeated by Leinster. The outcome was determined by a combination of a public vote and the verdict of a panel of renowned rugby experts. The offload King's success is the first for a player representing a top 14 club since 2015. His performances in the Champions Cup received widespread acclaim throughout the season, with his try in racing's quarter-final win at Clermont voted as the best of the knockout rounds. Leinster equal to lose a record of four European Champions Cup rugby titles when they defeated racing 92, 15-12 in the final. Well, the Crusaders produced the biggest comeback in the Super Rugby history after giving Waratahs a heartbreaking 31-29 loss. The home side conceded 29 unanswered points in as many minutes before staging quite an incredible comeback with 31 unanswered points. Meanwhile, Fijian Bon Wesak and the Holo scored a try for Highlanders to help them defeat the Lions 39-27 in their Super Rugby match last night. The loss leaves South Africa's conference leaders still chasing their first victory over New Zealand opponents this season. In other matches, Rebels defeated the Brumbies 27-24, Bulls won against the Sharks 39-33, while Chiefs beat Stormers 15-9. Fiji Mbati Huka Apisai Korisau and Aquila Uate both scored a try each for the Manly Sea Eagles as they beat the Broncos 38-24 in round 10 of the NRL last night. The Sea Eagles were mere desperate, defended better and attacked with a fluency which eluded the Broncos. In other matches, Melbourne Storm defeated Titans 28-14, while the Roosters beat Warriors 32-0. Cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, generally fine weather was experienced with isolated afternoon or evening showers. Now in the west for today, fine, apart from afternoon or evening showers, cool nights. And eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suba, cloudy periods with some showers with isolated heavy falls expected. And all the way up north, cloudy periods with some showers as well. Once again, cool nights. At sea, strong southeast winds with average speeds of 37 kilometers to 47 kilometers an hour. And rough seas are expected as well. Now for the tides, low tide at 11.04 p.m. with high tide at 5.20 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.24. As for tomorrow, it will be fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers, cool nights, moderate southeast winds, rough seas. As for Tuesday, cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands, isolated afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. Recapping the main stories, meningococcal vaccination campaign to be rolled out tomorrow, rice farmers to benefit from increased paddy price. And Lotoka thrashed by Team Wellington 6-0 in the first final of the OFC Champions League. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we're asking, should heavy vehicles be banned from being on the road during peak hours? Visit our FBC website to answer. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night.
पैरुकी रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बाहर टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट आई लव मिर्ची एफएम हमें स्पिन पकड़ पाव हुआ कि मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट